Hello everyone, it's Kiara Sheer Kelly and I am super excited about this conversation because I have a legit representative to give us educated information on what's really going on with the COVID-19 vaccinations. And I'm sure a lot of you have some questions as I've had, and I'm ready to not bombard her, but gracefully ask our questions because it's gonna be a fun conversation as well. So I want you to feel at home, let your guards down a little bit, and let's just really dig into this conversation. It is an amazing, I mean, can you put hashtag go? Goals, okay, hashtag goals all the way. Dr. Marcella, she is a light to our community. Um, she is a solution to our community. And I am so excited and just honored that she has taken the time out to chat with me. How are you, Dr. Marcella? Oh, I'm doing so well. It's so great to see you. Thank you so much for having this conversation today. I'm grateful for it. So can I just dig into the questions? Because you know we all want to know. Absolutely. First, let me ask you, what questions have you had from our community concerning the vaccination? Like, what's the most pressing question? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an honor for me to be able to have those conversations with folks. I talk to people all day, every day. And a lot of folks want to talk about the vaccine and vaccination. You know yeah. what people want to know? They want to know, does it work? And is it safe? Right, those yeah. are the questions I get over and over again. I'm really so happy to be able to say the vaccines are working. You know, they work to keep people out of the hospital, to keep serious illness away, and absolutely to keep us alive. And to the question of safe, you know, now we're looking at hundreds of millions of shots that people have gotten yeah. safely in the country. But listen, we have to make sure everybody gets their questions asked. We respect it. We respect that people have questions. That's why we're here today. We want to put some of those misinformation things to rest, but definitely right. get the right information out there. I love it. So I have a question. I was just talking to some peers and a lot of us millennials and generation X or Z or, you know, now we have that. It's the whole alphabet to our generations. <laughs> but I have my peers and younger individuals where we all were just conversing to yesterday and asking, you know, how will we know that there's no booster? Are they going to tell us we got to re up on it? Is this something that we have to get every year? So I'll start there. Can you share your thoughts with that? Yeah, it's such a good question. And it like warms me to know that folks are kind of having this conversation with yeah. each other and thinking through. Because that's another question I get too. Like, is there going to be a booster? Should we be waiting? Should it pause? So, you know, I tell people you can think a little bit like the flu vaccine. We know we have yeah. to get that on a regular basis because the flu virus can change a little bit. And we have to kind of get ahead of that and be responsive. Yeah. Now, the answer is we don't yet know for COVID-19 whether or not we're going to need boosters. Certainly for the White House and the administration, we're planning for all those scenarios, but it's going to depend a lot on kind of what SARS-CoV-2 does. That's that's the virus that causes Rona in the first place. And so we're keeping track of that. We're looking at all the variants. Yeah. I'm sure people have heard about that. So that's going to go into the booster. But the bottom line is, you know, to prevent variants, we got to get as many people vaccinated as quickly as we can. So I always say to folks, this isn't a wait and pause decision for later. Yeah. Because ironically, that's just going to make more likely our need to have to do the boosters. But so grateful that we have three vaccines authorized for emergency use for people to consider taking. I know it's a personal decision, absolutely, but want to make sure that information is out there. Got it. So I'm sure you've heard the question of, or the statement, they came up with this vaccine too soon. How do you respond to that? Because I'm also considering the vaccinations that we've had before, even to go out of the country, I was like, you know what, well, I didn't ask what the ingredients was for those vaccinations, but are there some similar ingredients? I don't even know if that's the right term to use, but as it pertains to what we're putting in our bodies, are there similar ingredients to some vaccinations that maybe we've got when, gotten when we were children or the ones that we have to get when we go across the country? Yeah, absolutely. Such a great question. I mean, you know, we 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 have this place now of people even knowing the companies, the names of the companies, you know, like yeah. Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson right. & Johnson. I mean, we'd be hard-pressed, even I would be hard-pressed to name any company for any of the other vaccines I get every year, including flu and other things. But it's understandable, right? So much attention, a global pandemic that people will have in the vaccines. Let me take your first question, right? Which is that time, the time for vaccine development. Because mm -hmm. I get that question a lot as well. And it does for those of you know, on the outside, it would seem like 
in a year they came up with this vaccine way too fast. So the first point there is when we're looking particularly at you know the mRNA, that's that technology that you know people are are thinking is is new and came up in the last year. It's been about 25 years in the making. Scientists have been working on that specific kind of vaccination. So not new, right? But accelerated in this past year because of the need. So that's important. So it goes back, you know, before the Obama administration, even that scientists were working on that kind of vaccine. But that second point I think is, is key for people to know is that no steps were skipped at all. So when we talk about the development, but also we talk about the review, independent scientists at the FDA, at CDC have looked at this, you know, questions I get all the time in our communities, kind of who was involved in this. So important to know that there were those representation, right, in mm -hmm. the scientists who developed the vaccine, representation in the scientists who reviewed everything, and really important representation in the clinical trials. So almost 30% of folks in the clinical trials, people of color. So all really key. And then that last point, the ingredients, it's very, very simple, you know, for the mRNA, it's just the mRNA really, and then the, the lipids or the fats to kind of provide a cushion or a pillow around it. Mm -hmm. But that mRNA goes away. So it does not go into your DNA, does not affect your DNA in any, any way. So some of that like is out there. I know I want to be able to speak to that today. What is the mRNA? I want to know what that is. I'm sure it's some that are watching like, what is that? It's like a little instruction book. So the M stands for, for messenger, right? Messenger RNA. And so the idea behind vaccines, really all vaccines, is to give your body a little bit of a heads up, advance notice, right, primer. So you're yeah. always trying to get something into your body that will allow your body to do its thing, right? Create little soldiers, we call them antibodies, right? But create little soldiers so that when the real thing comes along, that army is already built, right? It can Got be it. really hard, particularly when we talk about something like COVID-19, for your immune system to get geared up quickly enough to smash down that infection and keep it from becoming something more serious. So yeah. that mRNA basically just gives some instructions. What it shows us is the spike protein. So just the little surface of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. So your body can create antibodies against that spike protein. But importantly, that mRNA goes away. The COVID-19 vaccine cannot, cannot give you COVID-19. Okay. So I, I, I guess my next question, which I've heard from a lot of my peers, is you, you spoke about antibodies and the antigens. And I had COVID. And a lot of us are like, well, I'm hearing that the vaccination only prevents you from having to be on a ventilator or life-threatening issues. But if I had it before and I saw how my body responded to COVID, then why do I need the vaccination? How do we talk to them about that? Like, where does the antibodies come into play? Yeah, such a good question around kind of folks who've had COVID-19 and I'm, you know, thank the Lord you're all right. Yeah. What I always say to folks is we just don't know. It's always a gamble. We okay. don't know, especially the young people. You know, I'm a doctor. I work here in a hospital and we're seeing younger folks come in the hospital with COVID-19. So we always say, listen, that's not a strategy to say like, I'm going to just see how it goes and see yeah. if I get COVID and I'm young, so I'll be all right. Right. We yeah. just don't know. It's a gamble every time. So I'm just grateful that you're all right. Yeah. Now, the thing with reinfection, too, is we don't always know how reinfection will affect somebody. So it's still a gamble. But almost more uh, to the point is what, you know, some folks talk about that as natural immunity when you kind of had it already. And you're absolutely going to get a little bit of protection. The challenge is you don't know for how long or how strong. And that's what the vaccine can do and bring. So we really recommend everyone, even if you've already had COVID-19 and you're sure you had it and you had a confirmed positive test, still to get vaccinated is the recommendation. And it's to wait, you know, sort of the, the guidance is, is it's not right away. So, you know, you're looking at like three months after that infection to get vaccinated, but it's about how long and how strong for the antibodies that come via natural, uh, natural immunity. So got it's still it. that recommendation to get vaccinated. So I got questions just popping up and they're telling me, wait, but since I have you on to myself, I just wanted to keep asking questions. But let me just ask one more question. You, you said antibodies and antigens um, they made me forget my question, but it was if, if, 
because I heard, and I guess you can uh, let me know if it is a myth or if it's true, but there are some nurses that I've sat down and picked their brains uh, about the vaccination, and they're like, if you get the vaccine, then it's actually a possibility to where it lessens the likeliness of you having to sit or be quarantined for 14 days where you're sitting with the virus. So is that true or do I need to tell them to hush or what is it? <laughs> Okay. That's so important. So, you know, again, like those antibodies, that's what our body is, is doing to build up to fight, you know, those soldiers, that antigen is the virus itself, that's sort of like triggering that reaction in our immune system. So, gotcha. you know, one of the, um, you know, one of the things that we always say is when you get vaccinated, it does allow you to have a lot more freedoms, right? So one of the things is the CDC guidance, actually, that says once you've been vaccinated, then you know you really are not required to do that kind of quarantine and isolation when exposed to somebody who's symptomatic, unless you yourself become symptomatic. And I think this is an opportunity to talk through also kind of these different numbers we hear about how effective vaccines are and what they're effective against. Yeah. And I'm sure people are like hearing about breakthrough and so people who've been vaccinated, but like test positive. Yeah. So all the evidence there suggests that if there is a breakthrough that is getting um, infected kind of after being vaccinated and keep in mind, no vaccine is a hundred percent. We have high, high numbers with these, but it's still never gonna be a hundred percent. But in those cases of breakthrough, overwhelmingly extremely mild or just no symptoms of, at all, asymptomatic. So the guidance is still like for those folks who are asymptomatic, likely not transmitting much. Um, but if anybody, even if vaccinated has any symptoms, we still say go get tested and then that starts that again. But the idea is with vaccination, lots more freedom really for everybody, opportunities to reclaim our joy, be it travel, spending time with family, you know, not having to do all the quarantine and isolation guidance when exposed. So now I'm going to bring in my family, my aunts, my mommy, my brother. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. So Hi. I am talking to Dr. Marcella, my brother, call him my doo-doo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> see my family. I hello, Hi. Hi. Um, Wonderful to see you. Nice to see you too. Just for those who may just be tuning in or how the family's coming in, can you give us some information on the powerful woman that you are um, and how the, the role you play in the White House and things like that? Please share. Oh, goodness. Uh, thank you so much. And <laughs> it, it's, it's I'm, I'm humbled to be here with all of you. And this is so important, the conversation we're having today. So, you know, I'm... Dr. Marcella Nunez-Smith, I'm an internal medicine physician, so I still practice, I see patients. I'm a faculty member and associate dean for health equity research at, at Yale, at the Yale School of Medicine and Yale University. It's been a deep privilege to work closely with the Biden-Harris administration, and I serve as senior advisor to the White House COVID-19 response team. Just really grateful to be with all of you. Wow. wow. I'm, I'm sure a lot of us are like, hashtag goals, Dr. Marcella is goals. <laughs> right. um, but we're glad to have you. So I think we all can share um, something that we can relate to with both ministry and in the medical field, whereas this pandemic, the virus has changed a lot. We're not able to be in church together. And then Dr. Marcella, there are some loved ones that may want to come with your patients and they can't come in there. Um, can we discuss and just have the conversation of how this has changed our lives overall? Like, where is our headspace concerning that? Well, um, with me, of course, I am, um, uh, of course, I am the wife of the, a pastor. The chief apostle. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> come on now. Come on. <laughs> um, of, uh, of course, he's my dear husband. Uh, presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ, yes. Bishop J. Drew Sheard. And by us being leaders, of course, we try to do what we can to be exemplary yeah. and to um, practice what we preach. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very important that we not only be mindful of what, how we lead the people, mm -hmm. um, 
especially for a magnitude such as this pandemic, yeah. is so important because lives are affected, families are affected, mm -hmm. just people, period. So it's been um, really quite a challenge with us in making sure that we become educated yeah. as well. You know, we can't um, think that we're leaders and we're, we're, you know, out here for God, being used by him, but not naturally so mm -hmm. being educated because the scripture says first Thank natural you. and then spiritual. Yeah. So that being said, um, we became educated. Yeah. We had, uh, of course, Dr. Fauci come yeah. in and, and, and educate us. So um, by saying that, of course, we, uh, we prayed about it and, of course, we're um we got the shot okay and and um we kind of just encourage them you yeah. cannot twist anybody's arm yeah. and you leave let it leave it up to them you know mm -hmm. so that's where we are with it and just making sure of course we prayed of course you know we're the Pentecostals so we'll go all out we get that all <laughs> after we got the shot I prayed where the shot was and everything so I mean it's just uh, it's just a matter of having the faith we're faith-based people and then also you know naturally making sure that we are in the right right standards I love that mm -hmm. so Speaking of educated, should we put some blessed oil in the vaccination? Sure, yeah, yeah. Put some in there. We're going to throw a little bit in there, okay, doctor? <laughs> a little bit in there. <laughs> Dr. Marcella, can you chime too? Like, how has that been for you, you know, having families? Because just to again share a, a bit of the personal experience, I had the opportunity to go and take Nana and Papu to the hospital before we learned that they had COVID. And I was like, I'm ready. I'm about to go park my car and I'm coming in. But they came in looking like astronauts because they had to be so protected. And I'm like, where are they taking my family? I can't go in there. So how have you um, handled that? And, and family, you all are welcome to ask Dr. Marcella questions too. But how have you handled that? The, the, the families wanting to say, Dr. Marcella, can I come up in there with them or not? <laughs> oh, I know it's so hard. You know, and I was even there where we got our very first COVID patient come into the hospital. And it, you know, I, I think of all my colleagues, I mean, everyone who is out there working in our healing professions, it's been really tough, right? Both in terms of just the suffering we witness and as you said, you know, just families and trying to be that solid communicator for them so they know what's going on and people coming up with creative ways to get family members connected with their loved ones. But even for the colleagues, right? I mean, you know, we didn't have all the PPE that we needed. And, and so there's just, there's a lot. And so I say, you know, we know that uh, heroes all in, in the healing professions, but, but certainly, uh, you know, that's why I tell people I try not to talk in statistics because every one of those folks is like, is somebody special, right? And that motivates all of us every day in our in our work in our charge to deliver the best care we can yeah so what do you see the new normal being um as things begin to open back up do you see families being able to come back in with you know those patients that i um my husband cut his finger on the lawnmower and they was like, you can't come here. I said, well, I need somebody to tell me something because <laughs> his finger is falling off. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's just really different. And then I had a friend who just had a baby and her husband couldn't stay in the room yeah. with her. So what is the new normal look like for yeah. us? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this new normal conversation is it, right? That is everything. Like, how do we get there? And for hospitals and healthcare systems, it is about allowing families back in. And a lot of have been able to shift and change a little bit, allow one person in. You know, we, this is why we're having this part of the conversation today. It's absolutely true. Like people are gonna be on their own journey about the vaccination decision, but it's part of that conversation, right? Like how do we get to new normal? Why do we even get vaccinated? Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons we get vaccinated is obviously to keep the person who's vaccinated safe. We already know COVID-19 is very uneven in terms of how it affects people. So gamble every time to just think you're gonna get it and you don't know you'll be all right. Everybody over 12 is eligible now. We say vaccination will keep you safe. But that second point is getting to the new normal, right? Like people get vaccinated because we wanna keep everybody around us safe too. And that's so important, right? We don't wanna be the ones who bring something home to our family members and not everybody can get vaccinated. Some of our family members, community members are high risk. So how do we protect them too? 
and reclaim our joy, right? That new normal, whether it's gathering in person for worship, for reunion with family, for sports game, or being there when the babies are born in the hospital, right? All of that is that new normal. I, I, the light is there, it's getting brighter. These kind of conversations so important for folks in our community to just kind of get the information to know like what is on the other side of vaccination and that's it. I love it. Y'all have questions? Yes, I want to ask the question. Um, okay, now that we have a lot of the seniors that have taken the vaccination, um, I'm wondering now, if they've got um, college kids that are coming home. Is it safe for them to go into the house now with their loved ones? Um, as far as like the, the grandmothers and, and mothers, is it safe for them to go in? How are you, how are you all uh, working, on, working on that? Such a good question. This is this graduation season. Congrats to all the grads out there. And families are getting together and gather. You know, the CDC will have the guidance on this. And the CDC says, listen, the evidence is there for people who are fully vaccinated. So I always want to say that too, because that means two weeks, right? After your second shot, if it's the Pfizer or Moderna, or two weeks after the shot, if it's Johnson & Johnson. But people who are fully vaccinated are really well protected. The vaccines work really well. It's a blessing. And so the guidance is that fully vaccinated person, you know, they can be around people who are even unvaccinated, but we are encouraging and, and, and really the evidence suggests that's fine. But we are encouraging those young folks, right? Like everybody going to step up. We in our hospital now, thank goodness, as you said, not too many seniors, but we're seeing younger folks come in with COVID-19 that's serious. So we're even saying to the college kids for your own health, for your own health also get vaccinated. But for those who are fully vaccinated, the current guidance is, you know, it's up to you, you get a choice. Do you wanna keep a mask on or not? The, the evidence suggests the vaccines are working. Mm -hmm. I was, go ahead, Auntie. <laughs> I, I think my question is, uh, Doctor, is in the, the hospital setting, do you see um, us coming out of this thing with the hospital staying where they are or will they try to go back to some type of normalcy mm -hmm. as I'm a nurse. So I, I'm, I, you know, I, I understand um, what we are going through, mm -hmm. but I'm just wondering now because of all the precautions that they put in place, will those things remain in place or would we resolve some of them and keep some of them? Yeah, such a good question. Um, and you know, of course, thank you. Like I said up top, because the healing professionals, everybody working double, triple duty. And so, you know, the, that's right. I think there's something, you know, the, 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 the simple answer is hospitals, healthcare systems are gonna make a lot of decisions based on what's going on in their local communities. That's also a message I'm here to bring, you know, COVID-19 is local. So when we talk about people getting vaccinated, it doesn't matter who's vaccinated 10 states away, it's about who's vaccinated in our community and what the transmission is like in our community and cases. So healthcare systems are gonna be looking at those data, but, but by and large, I think, you know, we're gonna see some push to, to open up those health systems, but hopefully some of these lessons that we've learned, like we, people connecting with their providers, with telehealth and telephone, right? I think there's a lot of promise for, for that moving forward, but we have a lot of catching up to do. Folks have for understandable reasons, right? We're behind on who's getting preventive services, like their mammograms on the colonoscopies. We gotta get that caught up. So I think we're gonna see the healthcare systems really try to say what lessons have we learned from COVID-19 that will make things better going forward, but also get to a place where people can come in and see their loved ones. That's a goal for all of us in healthcare. Love that. Dr. Marcella, you are incredible. This is not a game, but can I play a game just to kind of, can I play a game with you hot potato question? About the vaccine though, because I know we got to get you out. Uh, can you get COVID from the vaccine? No, you cannot get COVID-19 from the vaccine. What are the side effects from the vaccine? The anticipated side effects from the vaccine, we've got to tell everybody, are mostly localized. You can get soreness at the site where you get the injection. You could also get some fever, body aches. Those are anticipated. You know, for some people, it's more so than the second shot. Some Tylenol, staying hydrated. You know, those are the things to expect. That's your immune system working. You know, anything outside of that is not one of the normal side effects. But keeping in mind that for most for a lot of people, they have they have nothing at all. And it doesn't mean it's not working. So whether you get the fever and the sore arm or not, once you've been vaccinated, your body is doing what it needs to to build those antibodies. 
Love it. Last hot potato question. Moderna or Pfizer? (laughs) The same. (laughs) The same. You know, I got vaccinated with Moderna because the day that I went to get vaccinated, that's what the hospital had. And I would have been happy to, to take either one. So Moderna and Pfizer, pretty much the same with mRNA. We know for Johnson & Johnson, there's some people who have a preference there because it's one and done. And so, you know, at this point, there's enough vaccine supply in the country, yay, for all eligible adults to get vaccinated. So we know, you know, people will get to yes, um, kind of as they get the information that they need to make those decisions. But you know, all three vaccines should be available in communities uh, near you. You can text your zip code to get vax and you'll get back the, the three closest pharmacies to you on which vaccines they have in stock. I love you, Dr. Marcella. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Wonderful. Bless, bless, bless. Thank you. Yes, you. Thank you. Thank you. So family, let's jump into what this has done to us. Jay, you and I, we share similarities with, you know, it's so much misinformation that is on social media. Mm -hmm. And our generation has a lot of questions. I mean, I've had a lot of trepidations when it comes to, um, excuse me, a lot of trepidation when it comes to the vaccine itself. How has this pandemic changed your life? Like, if, If you would consider it, if you're not considering it, what would be the like the thought behind it all? Um, I mean, well, you also you all always got to consider that uh, you know we lost our grandmother to this, mm-hmm. you know, so that was a big uh, wake up call for us, you know, um, more so to all of us, you know, and it just kind of encouraged us to stay more healthy, become yeah. more healthy, you know. what I'm saying I like to work out and stuff, and just you know run just to keep everything eat eat good, drink yeah. a lot of water. You know stuff that you know that uh you know benefit me in the long run. Yeah. You know, so I could say that was the biggest thing for me during the pandemic. And you know, I think you know I, I kind of think like minus the it being a you know a, a sickness or anything, or it could cause sickness or anything. Mm-hmm. I think it was a great opportunity for us to go and be to ourselves and really do mm-hmm. some self development yeah. as well. You know, yeah. so I, I appreciated that. I mean, I know people so eager to get back out and be around yeah. any people, but I appreciated that, you know, it gave me a chance to just be to myself with my family and yeah. just, just think about a lot of things in life, you yeah, know, absolutely. you know, so, um, yeah, that's just what it is for me. Yeah. It is bittersweet. I agree mm-hmm. with you. Um, because like you said, with our careers, all of us, mm-hmm. yeah. we're usually on the go, right. catching the flight out. Yeah. When we're seeing each other, we, what you doing here? Where you going? It's like, right. yeah. and then people will say, you know, where's your mama? Where's your auntie? Where's your brother? I'm like, I don't know, child. <laughs> but now right. we know where each other are. Right. 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 We're at home yeah. right up the street. You right. go right down right. five right. Right. Mm-hmm. Again, we appreciate you joining us for the conversation. I hope you enjoyed it. It was really informative for me, and I hope that it is for you, because I'm sure a lot of us are really trying to figure this thing out, and some of us are just like, I'm not doing it. And maybe hopefully after this conversation, it's caused you to just open your mind a bit, you know, to go to the right people to get the right information. Um, Thank you again to the brilliant minds behind this effort in this initiative, Ad Council and COVID Collaborative. Um, I'm really excited that you all are providing education for our community and to Dr. Marcella, she is a powerhouse. And so I just really appreciate you having the patience with the questions because I think that's too why some of us tap out We'll ask these questions, and sometimes the doctors will act like they're tired of our questions. But it's like, hey, you went to school to study this stuff, so share it with me, share it with me. So again, I wanna thank you, Dr. Marcella, for your patience and your graceful disposition when it comes to this. And of course, to the wonderful Clark sisters and my amazing brother, J. Drew Sheard. As you can see, we have questions just like you. Get the facts and make an informed decision. Get more information at getvaccineanswers.org. Again, that's getvaccineanswers.org. Org. Again, it's your girl, Kiara Sheer Kelly, and I love y'all. Be well, stay safe, and do what you need to do. Mwah.